Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us today for this Freight Collab session on Incoterms 2020. I'm deeply grateful to see over 1,800 attendees for today's webinar. With the ever-evolving landscape of international trade, exporters, importers, and freight forwarders need to stay up to date with the latest industry standards. And that's why we are here today. For those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, I'm Kian Karim. Over the past 15 years, I've been engaged in international trade, freight, logistics, and digital transformation. I've dedicated myself to helping companies streamline their businesses and grow sustainably using the latest management methods and technology. This webinar is one of the Freight Collapse educational webinars. And today, our aim is to equip you with the comprehensive understanding of Incoterms 2020, ensuring you are well prepared to confidently address any challenges that come your way. In this webinar, firstly, we will begin by exploring the fundamentals of Incoterms. Next, we will take a comprehensive look at Incoterms 2020. Following that, we will delve deeper, navigating through the 11 Incoterms 2020 rules, especially on FOB and CFR, and we will highlight common challenges and mistakes to be wary of. Subsequently, we will draw a comparison between Incoterms 2020 and Incoterms uh, 2010. Then we will wrap up with our conclusion and key takeaways. And at the end, we will engage in an interactive Q&A session to address any of your queries. Now let's dive in and see what, what is Incoterms. Um, in today's webinar, we will be referencing crucial insights uh, from two key publications by International Chamber of Commerce, ICC. Um, the first is the ICC Handbook on Transport and Incoterms Rules 2020, and the second is the standalone Incoterms 2020 rules. It's worth noting that the handbook encompasses the details present in the standalone Incoterms 2020 rules. For those who have been following the ICC branding, you might notice that both of these publications feature the older ICC logo, which has since been updated to a new design that we will see later in this presentation. So what is Incoterms? Incoterms is short for International Chamber of uh, International Commercial Terms. Uh, are a set of rules published by International Chamber of Commerce, ICC, that define the responsibilities of buyers and say, sellers involved in the international and domestic transportation of goods. Um, as you can see here, uh, this is the new logo of ICC. For those familiar with the logo, uh, with the old logo, it might feel a bit different at first. That's just how our brains are wired. Sometimes we are resistant to change. Um, but however, for now, let's shift gears and dive into the understanding of Incoterms. Um, Incoterms provide a universal set of rules and guidelines that help businesses worldwide understand the obligations, um, costs, and risks delivery involves in the contracts for sales and purchase of goods between sellers and buyers. But what is applications? Applications such as who organized the contracts for carriage or insurance of goods or who are responsible for uh, customs formalities. And risk means where is the risk of damage to the goods transfer from seller to buyer. And the cost means that which party responsible for which costs like transportation, packing, loading, unloading, customs clearance. And there are key considerations that you should, you should be aware of while you are dealing with Incoterms. First is about the legal status of Incoterms. You should know that Incoterms are not laws. And um, to be applicable, Incoterms should be agreed by both buyer and seller. It means that Incoterms can be applicable only if the buyer and seller agree to use a specific Incoterms in their contract of sale. And um, considering the contractual role of Incoterms, we should know that Incoterms are not a standalone contract, but can be part of a sales contract. 
And also we should consider that the um, inquiry terms don't specify applicable law for the contract. And uh, also we should, we should consider that when you are using inco terms, it's essential for both parties, buyers and sellers, to specify the exact point within the chosen place or port, the risk transfer at point. Because sometimes, later we can, uh, I will explain to you, sometimes in some terms, the risks, the, the point that risk will transfer from seller to buyer is different with the point that the cost is transferred. So stay tuned with me. I will explain you all details. So um, we understand what is inco terms. Now I wanted to I want to tell you what is inco terms 2020. Um, inco terms 2020 is including 11 terms. Uh, the the first seven terms are rules for any modes or modes of transport, and the last. Four terms are rules for sea and inland waterway transport. The first term of the INCO terms is X work. X work means that the seller delivers when it, um, when it places the goods at the disposal of the buyer at the seller's premises or at another name place, like work, like factory, warehouse, any place. Um, and the important thing is that the seller is not responsible for loading the goods on the buyer's collecting vehicle, nor for the customs formalities. In this term, in the X work, the seller's responsibilities are the minimum. If it, I'm going to tell you the next one, FCA or free carrier. Free carrier means that the seller delivers the goods to the carrier or another person nominated by the buyer at the seller's premises or another name place. It means that the um, seller is responsible for doing and paying for export customs formalities. But the main difference between FCA and export, the main difference between FCA and export is that in FCA, sellers should do and pay for the customs formalities, but in X4, seller is not responsible for doing customs formalities. Uh, the next term is CPT, carriage pay to. Carriage pay to means that the seller delivers the goods to carrier or another person nominated by the seller. At an agreed place, the seller must contract and pay the cost of carriage. Um, the important point is that it is a C term. It means that the, the, the total C terms of INCO terms are CPT, CIP, CFR, and CIF. And C terms are a little tricky terms because in the C terms, the risk transferring point and the cost transferring point are different. I will explain you in details later when I'm going to explain you CFR but we should consider that the CIP is exactly the same as CPT with the small difference that uh, in CIP, which is a carriage and the insurance paid to, the seller is responsible to do the, the insurance, the cargo insurance. There is a change in the um, CIP in 2020, and I will explain to you when I'm going to compare 2000. 20 INCO terms and INCO terms 2010. In DPU, which is a um, new term in 2022, in INCO terms 2022, and it was a DAT before in 2010, they've changed it to DPU to make it more clear. Um, in DPU, the seller delivers the goods and unload them and the name destination place. The buyer is responsible for import clearance and any applicable local taxes or import duties. So the buyer is responsible for import clearance and any applicable local taxes or import duties. It means that seller is not responsible for the import customs formalities, but the, it should be um, unloaded. It means that the seller should unload the cargo at, at the place that agreed but, it, but the seller is not responsible for the cost, import customs formalities at destination. But what is the um, DAP? 
DAP is very similar to DPU, but in the DAP, the seller delivers the goods to a named destination ready for unloading it meant by the buyer. It means that the, in DAP, the seller is not responsible for unloading the cargo at destination. It means um, that the buyer is responsible for import customs formalities and unloading the cargo at destination. In the DDP, delivered uh, duty paid, the seller delivered the goods clear for import to a name place. The seller bears all costs and risks, including duty payments. It means that the, in DDP, the seller's responsibilities are maximum. The, the buyer just sit there in the destination and the seller should do all, should do and pay all the costs involved, the transportation, the um, export customs formalities, import customs formalities, and everything. So the, in the DDP, the risk and cost for the seller is maximal. And, uh, but let's see what are the rules for sea and inland waterway transport. There are four rules, which are FAS, FOB, CFR, and CIF. In the FAS, the seller delivers the goods alongside the buyer's vessel at the specific port. From this point, the buyer is responsible for all costs and risks. And the FOB and CFR, which are the, somehow one of the, the, the most common terms that it's using in international trade. In the FOB, the seller delivers the goods on board the vessel chosen by the buyer. The risk passes to the buyer once the goods are on board. And in the CFR, the seller clear the goods for export and contract and pay the cost of transport to the specific port of destination. The risk of loss or damage to the goods passes when the goods are on board the vessel. This is the tricky part. I will explain you in details. Don't worry. And the last one is the um, CIF, which is very similar to CFR, but the seller also pays for insurance coverage for the goods during the sea transportation. If you are confused now, don't worry. We are going to um, elaborate and explain the FOB and CFR. And when I explain FOB and CFR, hopefully you will understand that how Incoterms works. So to, to explain FOB, I, I prepared this slide. I should explain you the slide first. At the left side of the slide, you can see this is the port of loading. This is the seller side. Sellers here is recognized by yellow color. So this yellow line means the, the cost that the seller should pay. And on the right side of the slide, you can see the buyer and this is the port of discharge. And buyer recognized by the purple color. So these purple line shows the buyer's um, costs and these uh, purple bar shows the buyer's risks. It means in this, this slide shows that the seller should pay all costs till loading the cargo on board the vessel in, in, in FOP term. And from the onboarding to the vessel, all other costs should be paid by buyer. Considering the risks, the seller, is the seller will be responsible for any damage to the goods till cargo load on board the vessel. And from that moment, when the cargo loaded on board the vessel, the risk will be transferred to buyer. If you think that it's clear, I have an explanation. I have an example for you. And let's see if you can answer that question. But before that, let's see what is, let's again check the definition of the free on board or FOB. Free on board means that the seller delivers the goods on board the vessel dominated by the buyer at the name port of the shipment. The risk of loss or 
damage to the goods passes when the goods are on board the vessel and the buyer bills bears all costs from that moment onward as i explained now take a look at the question and i hope you can answer this question properly question one in a fob business if a container be damaged at the time of loading before unloading the vessel at pol what are the responsibilities of the following parties seller buyer carrier it means the shipping line or port operator just take a few seconds read again the question and think about it in a FOB business, if a container be damaged at the time of loading before, unlo before onboarding the vessel at POL, what are the responsibilities of the following parties? Okay, I'm going to tell you what are the responsibilities of each party and what are the um, somehow tricky points that can make the confusion and when there is a confusion there will be disputes um, in the seller from the seller side as you can see as we can see in the in this slide the seller is responsible to load the cargo on board. And because the cargo somehow damaged before loading on board, uh, so the seller is responsible for the damage. Okay, so the seller is responsible for the damage. When seller is responsible for damage, buyer is not responsible for damage. But the tricky point of the FOB is that uh, seller when, when seller deliver the goods to the port somehow doesn't have the control over the over the containers why because the terms of the, the because the contract of the shipping signed by the buyer and i will explain you why it's <laughs> why it's um, difficult for those handling container shipments fob might not be your best choice. Here's the thing. Imagine you you are a seller and you are dispatched your container to the export port. As we mentioned to the as per, as we mentioned in the example, once it gets there, you will find that you will lose control over the containers before it even boards the vessel. Why does this happen? It's because of the shipping contracts under the FOB term. In the FOB, buyer is responsible for the shipping agreement, which is almost always based on the CYCY. This means that the shipping line takes over the responsibility of the cargo right from the container yard at the port of loading to the container yard at the port of discharge. So while your goods are still in the port of export, you will lose your control over them. Now, if FOB isn't ideal, what is the alternative? ICC suggests to enter FCA. This term is much more fitting for the container shipments. You might wonder if FCA is so great, why aren't more sellers using it? Mm, because a lot of sellers remain with the FOB because of the regular practice in the trade. So, um, and another reason is that the banks often ask for an onboard bill of lading when they issue letter of credit. This bill confirms that goods are on board the vessel and allows the seller to get paid. With FOB, since sellers have the loading responsibilities, they stand a better chance of obtaining this onboard bill of lading. Uh, so ICC is encouraging FCA for uh, for the container business and be, and also because they are encouraging for F use encouraging sellers and buyers to use FCA for the con for the container business they they recently changed the the FCA rule under the updated FCA rules both the buyer and seller can agree and allow sellers to get that onboard bill of lading so we should consider that the uh, still FOB is one of the most common 
terms that it's used in the container, but it's not the best because of the confusion when there is a damage, as, as we explained in this question. When there is a damage, seller is responsible. When there is a damage before loading the cargo on vessel, seller is responsible for something that it's not in their hand. And it will make a very con a complicity when, in case of the claims, and uh, really sellers will be in huge difficulties to get their um, money from the insurance if there is any insurance and if, if they wanted to get from the carrier. But in this case, what are the responsibilities of the carrier in this question? The carrier, if, if because the, most of the um, contracts of carriage in containers are CYCY, and we assumption that this contract was CYCY, carrier was responsible for the damage, and between carrier and port operator, port operator is responsible because most of the carriers has contract with the port operators. And that's why that they are offering CYCY uh, terms for their contract of carriage. Um, now let's see what is the CFR. CFR is cost and freight. This is slide also is similar to FOB slide. At the left side, you can see the seller side and port of loading. And at the right side, you can see the buyer and port of discharge. In the CFR, seller should pay all the costs till the cargo arrives to final destination or um, port of discharge. But the tricky part is that the risk will be transferred from the point that the cargo on board the vessel. This is very confusing even for very experts that, that they are working for many years. Many of them they forget, many of them they don't know. But I really like that after this session, you learn that in CFR, the place that the risk of damage will transfer is different with the place that the, the cost will be transferred. It means that seller will contract and will pay for the shipping charges for the shipping and carriage. But if there is, there will be any damage in the middle of the transportation, in the middle of the sea, the buyer is responsible for damage. It's very confusing. You may not believe it, but this is the INCO terms and you should learn it. Let's see and let's read what is INCO terms definition, uh, what is CFR definition. Cost and freight means that the seller delivers the goods on board the vessel or procures the goods already so delivered. The risk of loss of or damage to the goods passes when the goods are on board the vessel. The seller must contract for and pay the cost and freight necessarily to bring the goods to the named port of destination. If you think that you already learned CFR, let's see, can you answer this question correctly? But before going to the question, I have an important note here. In CFR rule, as I explained, risk and costs are transferred at different places. While the contract will always specify the destination port, it might not specify the port of shipment, which is where risk passes to the buyer. Now let's read this a little tricky question because CFR is very important. I, I, I really like that you learn CFR after this session. Um, take a look at the question two. In the CFR contract, a Malaysian trading company sold 2,500 metric ton block stones as CFR Yun for China to a Chinese factory. The Malaysian trading company bought the cargo from a UAE trading co, which will load them on board the Jebel Ali UAE to Yonfo, China, with transshipment in Port Kela, Malaysia. Uh, you you may be a little confused, confused, but this is the this is the somehow a real world scenarios. There is a Malaysian trading company sold 2,500 block stones. 2,500 metric ton block stones to a um, Chinese company. 
to, as a CFR info, but the Malaysian company bought the cargo from a UAE company, UAE trading company, and the UAE company will load the cargo from Jebel Ali, will send to Yunfo via Port Kela. In the sales contract between Malaysian Trading Co. and the Chinese factory, the port of loading or the place where risk will be transferred from seller to the buyer is not clarified. It means in the contract of Malaysian Trading Company and, and the Chinese factory, they didn't mention that what is the port of loading, where the risk will be transferred. They didn't mention in their contracts. They just mentioned in the, in the contracts, they just mentioned CFR info, but they didn't mention where is the port of loading and where the risk will be transferred. And this accident happened during the sea transportation between Jebel Ali and Port Kelong. It means that the cargo didn't arrive to Port Kelan. An accident caused uh, for 25, 20 foot of the cargo and containers to be delivered in damage to the Yun for China. It means that there wasn't some accident in the middle of the sea transportation from Jebel Ali to Port Kelan, and the cargo delivered to Yun for China as damaged, 25 of those containers. Now let me know in the comments with mentioning that it is an answer for question two. Uh, who is responsible for this damage? Read the question properly and answer the question. Please, while you are answering the questions, mention that you are answering to which question? Um, question two or question one? As you can see, there are different answers. For example, Sarah is mentioning that the Chinese factory is responsible. Tilak mentioned Malaysian company. So as you can see, it is confusing. After now we read the, now we understand Inco terms and CFR term, and it's still confusing. Fazim mentioned it's a Chinese factory. Babita said Malaysian company. Look, this is how the, the um, disputes will happen in the real world scenarios. Because as a, as a, in this scenario, the Chinese factory may think that they bought the cargo from a Malaysian company, and they might think that the port of loading will be Port Galang. And if they understand that the port of the cargo damage before arriving the vessel to the Port Galang, they said, okay, the risk is still not transferred to me. Why I should be responsible for something that is not related to me? On another side, Malaysian company may think that they sold in CFR terms and the, dam the, the risk will be transferred in CFR, in port of loading. So this, in these scenarios, the confusion will happen. And when there is confusion, there will be disputes. Please, please, when you are dealing with INCO terms, especially in, in C terms, write down in the contracts, where is the port that the risk will be transferred? Where is the point that the risk will be transferred? This will be very helpful in preventing such confusion and such disputes. It will save you time, it will save you cost, and it will save you a lot of money and reputation. So, in CPT, CIP, CFR, or CIF rules, risk passes and costs are transferred at different places. And uh, uh, 
and the parties are real and the parties are real advised to identify as precisely as possible in contracts both the place of delivery where the risk passes to the buyer and the name place of destination to which the seller must contract for carriage. So it means, as I mentioned, write down the place that you are selling, for example, CFR UNFO and the location and the port that will be, the risk will be transferred in this case, for example, for Jebeleli or Port Kalan. Now we understand that um, what is Incoterms 2020. Let's see what was the update from 2010 to 2020. Um, in 2010, it was a bit of puzzle to con to understand that who is which part is responsible for costs. You had to go through different sections to determine who pays for what. But in 2020, it's much easier. Costs are clearly listed. Sellers check for A9 and buyers check B9, B9. It means that if you go to the A9 section for each term, you will understand that what are the what what costs should be paid by seller. And if you go to B, B9 section, in each term, you will find out that um, what are what costs should be paid by a buyer. So it means that the clarification of costs for each term is very straightforward in 2020. Considering the insurance cover um, that involves in two terms of CIP and CIF, in 2010, the seller should only provide the basic insurance, but in CIF, uh, but in 2020, the CIF rule remained the same. It means in, in 2020, when there is a CI, CIF rule, the seller should only do the minimum coverage for the insurance. But in case of CIP, there was an upgrade and the seller should arrange the insurance based on all risks covered. This is very important part. This is very important update between the 2020 and 2010. The actually the most important update for the 2020 is the new rule that is the change in the DAT delivered at terminal um, terms in 2010 because the terminal was a little confusing. In 2020, to clarify, they've changed the name to DPU, delivered at place unloaded. And in DPU, the delivery spot can be literally anywhere, not just place called terminal. This was the most important updates for uh, 2020 and 2010 in co terms. So now you can understand that what are the difference of between 2020 Incoterms and Incoterms 2010. So um, in today's webinar, we provided an in-depth explanation of Incoterms 2020, offering clarity and insight for exporters, importers, and forwarders alike. Some of the pivotal takeaways include understanding Incoterms. We delve into the significance of Incoterms and their essential role in international trade, ensuring a mutual understanding between buyers and sellers regarding shipping obligations, costs, and risks. We navigated through 11 Incoterms uh, 2020 rules, uh, and also we explored FOB and CFR and demystified their tricky parts through some practical examples. And uh, also we compared the updates that were in 2020 comparing 2010 INCO terms. In conclusion, mastering the INCO terms 2020 is crucial for anyone involved in international trade. Adopting the right terms can prevent potential misunderstanding, reduce costs, risks, and ensure both, both parties are clear on their responsibilities as global trade dynamics continue to evolve, staying informed and updated on such essential guidelines is paramount for success. 
So I would be very happy to answer any questions that you have. Uh, yes, I mean, if you're still there, uh, you mentioned that, sorry, I didn't figure out who is responsible for. I think you are referring to question two, which it was um, a contract between Malaysian and Chinese company. It depends. It, when there is a confusion in the contracts, no one can, without having more information, no one can say clearly that, who is responsible? Logically, it, it depends on the bill of lading that is provided. I think if the bill of lading that is provided from the seller to buyer mentioned that the port of loading is Jebel Ali, I think the, um, the responsible party will be the Chinese company because the risk already transferred to the Chinese company. But as I mentioned, there is no clear answer without having more information. It, uh, it depends on the other information and other terms that mentioned in their contract. I hope it's clear now. Fazim asked that, can you speak about dispute resolutions? Yes, uh, Fazim. Th these confusions make a lot of disputes. And um, for the dispute resolutions, it is, again, very complicated thing. Depends on the rules and regulations and applicable law of the countries. And depends on the, their their contracts. It's very important that the sellers and buyers clearly mention that what, where is the apl applicable law, and clearly mention that in case of dispute, what they should do. So, um, as an answer, that it highly depends on the contract between the sell between the seller and buyer. It's my great pleasure. Yes, Renita asked a very great question that are there any specific requirements or rules for insurance, age of value of goods? Um, insurance is a very complicated topic itself it's a, a course and but in inco terms in inco terms 2020 it just mentioned that when there is a cif the minimum coverage it means the c clause it's enough but when there is a cip the, there should be a maximum coverage now depends on the commodity, depends on the value of the cargo, depends on even the type of the transportation. Insurance companies may have different ideas, may have different, different requirements. That in the, in the um, INCO terms, it doesn't clear it, but it, there are some regular practices in each businesses, in each commodities, that the um, professional sellers and buyers, they know their uh, regular practices and it's very important in case that the, it's not clear by the seller and buyer that which insurance they should do they should talk, sit talk and have a conclusion on the insurance it's very important that before signing the contract discuss a lot about the terms and conditions of the the contracts and then sign the contract to prevent any disputes in future Um, Sander asks a very 
interesting question. If you have an X work shipment, but the place is not mentioned, it is likely that it is the factory of the seller, but it could be anywhere. Look, the, these are the things that makes confusion. These are the things that we should prevent to do. It's very important that when we mention X work, we mention the address and the location of the, the, the location that the seller is responsible to deliver the goods, to pre, not deliver, to prepare the goods. So if it just mentioned X work, I think it's not clear. If I am the buyer and if you are the seller and you offer as an X work, for sure I will ask X work where. And my suggestion and my advice is to make the offers, make the contracts as clear as possible to prevent any confusion for uh, all parties. It's my pleasure, Kazi. Sander, I hope I already explained uh, and I hope you, uh, I could be able to answer your question. This is a very interesting question um, that Sarah asks. Sarah asks that we are selling our products, FCA, all rich hum. I don't, I, I hope I can, I, I read the name of the city properly. But who is in charge for transport costs for from the city, the factory, to airport or port of loading, seller or buyer? Um, as you mentioned, that you are selling as FCA. And FCA, in the FCA, all costs after, after delivering to the, to the place, it means that you should make the cargo available in the, in the factory. So the transport costs from the factory to the airport and port of loading is the buyer's responsibility. Costs, and risk to the risk of damage of the cargo unless you wanted to help your buyer sometimes in the in exports you wanted to do some favors for your uh, buyers it's completely different if you wanted to do a favor for for your buyer it's different but there, it is their responsibility to bring the cargo from the factory and send to airport and means that the port of loading I will answer a few more questions and we will finish the webinar. It's a very interesting question that Char Charlton asks that shipping line do not participate in the contract between seller and buyer. How does Incoterms affect shipping line? Actually, in terms of the, as a shipping line, in terms of their sales is important for them because they can understand that who is their customer. Sometimes when you are, as a shipping line, when you are marketing for uh, some specific routes. If you know that the, these types of products are mostly selling as FOB or CFR, you can find your customers better. You can target your customers better uh, and it will save a lot for you. So it's very important to shipping lines to understand Incoterms. It's very important for freight forwarders to learn Incoterms because it will really help their marketing and also it will help them to help to help their customers as an advisor.
Elani asks a very great question for XWorks. Who will be responsible for the, I think it's the certification of origin from Chamber of Commerce? Um, because in XWork, the buyer is responsible for providing, for to doing the XWork customs formalities and to do the, um, all, all, to provide all documents. It is the um, buyer's responsibility to provide them, but sometimes it's not practical. Sometimes it needs some documents from the, from the seller, depends on each country. If in, in the countries, the, the agents, the, the freight forwarding agents can get the COO from the Chamber of Commerce, the buyers will, will um, be responsible unless it's better that they change the selling contracts to FCA. So thank you very much, everyone. It was my great pleasure meeting you all. I hope to have you in the next webinars. But I should, before finishing the webinar, I like to mention that this webinar was powered by Freight Collab, the digital freight collaboration platform. Freight Collab is an exclusive network of the most reliable and visionary freight and logistics companies. In Freight Collab, we gather the best and visionary freight and logistics companies together to um, change the world by using the latest technology. So again, thank you very much. It was my great pleasure to meet you all. Have a great day.